alaikum everyone. My name is Mernan Alag and I, I'm a Sunday school student and will be your moderator for this year's Mawlid and Nebawi celebration. Today, we are celebrating Mawlid and Nebawi or the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. ICCP is wishing everyone a joyous Mawlid and Nebawi celebration and may the blessing of the Prophet Muhammad be with you always. First, we begin our program with a recitation by Qara Anas. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن المتقين A 
for our Melod celebration by ICCP Sunday School student, Maram Alag. Dear brothers and sisters, the 12th of Rabia al-Awwal is the birthday of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most noble person in this world. Prophet Muhammad is one of the most influential figures humanity has ever witnessed. His words and deeds nurtured human thought and behavior throughout history. The American author Michael H. Hart, in his book, The 100, a ranking of the most influential figures, persons in history, ranked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the most influential person in all of history because he was both the most prominent religious and political leader. He led both social and political reforms. Although his childhood was difficult, he was the best companion anyone could ever wish for. Throughout his life, he was honest, trustworthy, and generous. As we all know, he had many difficulties spreading Islam. He and his followers suffered greatly from the disbelievers who tried to stop them. When he emigrated to Medina, he was able to build a community within 10 years. Prophet Muhammad sallam's wonderful personality prompted many people to accept Islam all around the world. Among all mankind, Prophet Muhammad sallam was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be his last prophet and messenger. There are numerous lessons we can learn from the Prophet's life. For example, we should always be kind, respectful, and generous. By remembering the birthday of the Prophet wasallam, let us Muslims follow the morals of the Prophet Muhammad so that we can all receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness. I would like to end with a verse from Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 31. Say, O Muhammad, if you sincerely love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and forgive your sins. Allah is all forgiving and most merciful. Thank you and have a wonderful Nawra the Nebawi, everyone. Next, it's time to listen to the welcome by all the Sunday school children by singing the Nasheed standing with the chorus of Ta'ala al Badru.
Thank you, Sunday School students, for all your hard work. Now, it's time to listen to a Nasheed by Kara Ennis. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Sorry, I forgot to welcome you. Welcome, inshallah, again. May Allah bless you all. And uh, may Allah and he protects all your children, inshallah. <coughs> محمد سيد الكونين والثقلين محمد بثوب أوجاع الهوى تقلبوا فلو كان لي قلبا عشت بواحد وأترك قلبا في هواك يعذب لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 
والحبيب رسول الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله رسول الله فلو كان لي قلب عشت بواحد وأترك قلب في هواك يعذب لكن لي قلبا تملكه الهوى فالعيش يهلاني ولا الموت أقرب لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله والحبيب رسول الله كعصفورة في كافي طفل يضمها تذوق سياق الماء والطفل يلعب فلا الطفل ذو عقل يحنو لما بها ولا الطير ذو ريش يطير فيذهب لا إله إلا الله أشعلي مني نقلق من رزقي لاش والخالق يرزقني مني أشعلي أنا عبد مملوك والأشياء مقدية ما في التحقيق شكوك ربي نمر فيا وأنا نظري متروك في الأرحم والأحشاء من نطفة صورني الله اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا حبيبنا بالسلام Thank you Cora Anas for the beautiful nasheed Now we will listen to a speech by Imam Rafai Assalamu <laughs> alaikum everyone Alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful day. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam wa ala habibihi al-Mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. That you are indeed upon a very lofty standard of conduct. And Many people exemplify very good conduct with others. But there's a very select people that are able to maintain it throughout all of their interactions and especially when they're at home. So outside is a very divergent reality from what happens inside. One of the greatest testaments of the kindness of the Messenger وسلم, is his interactions with his family. The Prophet وسلم, and Khadija عنها, had a very, very close relationship. And the foundation of that relationship was something that was very unique in the time that they lived in. And that was that Khadija and the Prophet وسلم, never worshipped idols. They never worshipped idols together. And in fact, Khadija spent time with relatives like Warqat ibn Nawfal and others who exposed her the ideas of monotheism. Just as the Messenger from his very birth 
was dissatisfied with the idea of worshipping an idol. On many occasions, Khadija would pack for herself and for the Prophet وسلم, and the two of them would go, in some occasions just him, but in some cases, both of them would go together to Ghar Hira, to the cave of Hira. And although they would sit in silence and they didn't exchange any thoughts and they didn't exchange any words, but a deep connection was established. And that was built on that monotheism and that worship and the fundamental ideals and beliefs and principles that they both shared. Their partnership was strong because they admired each other. Because it was not based on ego and resentment. It's cap this idea is captured in the Zamiluni incident that's known to many of you. In which the Messenger وسلم, came to his wife Khadija in that very sensitive moment and he said, لَقَدْ خَشِيتُ عَلَى نَفْسِي That I'm fearful for myself because he was overwhelmed by that situation. Not necessarily the physical form of Jibreel appearing before him, but by the weight of the duty and responsibility upon him as Al Mab'uth Rahmatan Lil Alameen, as the one that was sent with the final message, Khatamun Nabiyeen, Rahmatun Lil Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And many people would have also had doubts in that moment, but not Khadija. How did she reassure him? She reminded him of his own virtues and of Allah's mercy over him. He said, Innaka la tasudur rahim that you are indeed a person that joins family relations. You bring people together rather than taking people apart. Kalla wallahu ma yukhzika Allahu abada. Allah is never going to disappoint you because you bring people together. And you're always honest and truthful in all of your speech. You take care of the poor and the needy. And you're very generous to the, to the guest. The Prophet ﷺ was reminded by his wife that you are the first one to answer the call of any person who is in need. If there's any opportunity for goodness, you are the first to do it. As a result, the Prophet ﷺ said that خير نسائها Maryam bint Imran that the best woman in her time was Mary, the daughter of Imran, and the best woman in our time is Khadija, Khadija bint Khuwailid. In fact, naturally, Aisha radiallahu anha would inquire about that, and she asked, "Is there anyone that has been worthy of your love?" because he was overwhelmed by that emotion. And the Prophet ﷺ said that she believed in me when no one else did. She embraced Islam when everyone disbelieved in me. And she helped and comforted me when there was no one to extend a lending and comforting hand. Now after her passing, the Prophet ﷺ continued to visit her family and his in-laws. He used to even send gifts to them many, many years after her passing. And when someone asked about Khadija, the Prophet ﷺ once said, Inni ruziqtu hubbaha, that Allah has indeed nourished me with the love for Khadija. When we think of risk, we ask, Oh Allah, grant me risk. We think about money, think about our stock portfolio. Sorry to remind you guys about that. <laughs> it's not doing so well. <laughs> it's gonna get better, inshallah. We'll have some. We'll have some. It's not the bottom yet, but inshallah, it'll be okay. But the greatest risk is not something that you can check on your phone. Okay, it's not in a sticker. It's not in a ticker. But rather, the risk that the Prophet sallallahu was the relationships, right? He was saying, Allah nourished me and provided risk in the form of a loving wife. And not only that, the Prophet ﷺ said that it was nourished by Allah Himself. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ As Dr. Tariq often reminds us, that this love and mercy between the hearts is of a divine origin. It comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he used to say, كَأَنَّهَا كَانَتْ as one of the writers, one of the poets said, كَأَنَّهُ لَمْ يَكُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا أَمْرَةٌ إِلَّا خَدِيجًا 
It was as if the Prophet ﷺ didn't notice any woman in the world except for Khadija. He said, Innaha kanat wa kanat. That Khadija radiallahu anha was the way that she was. She had her own way of doing things. It shows the perception of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana fi khidmati ahli who was in the service of his families. He would milk his own sheep. He would patch his own clothes. He would clean his own garments. He would mend his own shoes. He would get his own things. And a lot of people mention that. Everybody wants their husband to be like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And everybody wants their wife to be like Khadija radiallahu anha. <laughs> it works both ways, right? If you want your wife to be like Khadija, then you better start acting like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that act of service is the highest level of kindness. But at the, at the root of it was the simplicity and humility of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Somebody asked him, what type of food do you prefer? Right? That's a common question. What's your favorite food to eat? Pizza, right? <laughs> Every Sunday I debate with these kids. What do you guys think about Domino's pizza? Okay. I'm, I'm from New York, so eating Domino's is this is a crim this is a crime. <laughs> but at, at, at Sunday school, these kids, how, what do you guys think of the pizza? They love this pizza, so I'm kind of I'm a little bit outnumbered. <laughs> so we're gonna go with the kids, inshallah. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, what's your favorite food to eat? He answered, he said, the food that is the most beloved to me is the one that has the most hands in it. Because what makes the meal is not the food, it's the people that you have to share it with. And in fact, his food was less. Aisha said that he never filled his stomach until he was full. When he was with his family, he never used to ask for anything and he never desired it. If they fed him, if food was offered to the Prophet, then he would eat. He accepted whatever was served to him and he drank whatever was offered to drink. <laughs> now think about this. We're in Potomac, Maryland, right? 20854, yeah. right? Yeah. The room of the Prophet Wasallam was a small room in the eastern side of the masjid. Many of you know this as the final place of resting of the Messenger It was made of earthen walls, similar to clay, and a roof just of leaves. Okay, it didn't even have a proper roof. In it there was a mat, a thin mattress, there was a pillow, inside of the pillow was bark of trees. I don't think we'd be able we start complaining if we go camping. The pillow had branches inside of it. There was a water bag, there was a small plate that was used for dates, and there was a glass of water. My dear sisters and brothers, I have just explained to you all of the house items of the Prophet that was the entirety of his home. But that was the greatest home to ever exist. Because the home wasn't in the possessions, the personal property that was in the house. Because the home comprised of the people that lived in it. And they were the greatest people that this world has ever seen. When Arabia entered into Islam, the treasury was full of money and of grain. But the day that the Prophet ﷺ departed from this earth, there wasn't even food for that day. Because his wife Aisha anha had already given it away to the poor. And like all of the Prophets, he left this world with no worldly possessions. His sitting was simple. He said, I am a servant and a abd. abd. And I sit as a slave and a servant sits. His sleep was, le was less. Aisha radiallahu anha was inquiring, how is it possible that you're aware of things when you're asleep? And he said, Ya Aisha, inna aynayna, inna aynaya tanamani wala yanamu qalbi. He said that my two eyes, they fall asleep, but my heart is always awake and doesn't sleep. He invested in his relationship. He gave it all of his attention. 
Unless there was a matter of concern for the Ummah, the Prophet وسلم, as soon as he finished in the masjid and he prayed his Aisha prayer, he would rush home. And he would spend that time with his family. They would joke together. They would have dinner together. They would have conversations. In fact, the Prophet وسلم, would go on walks with his family and catch up on the events of the days. But as I mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ was matched by that by his wife. In the case of Aisha radiallahu anha, before going to sleep, she never would go to sleep without making sure that there was a bowl of water ready by the door. So the Prophet ﷺ would be able to perform his wudu. And beside it, she would place that siwak, that toothbrush. So the Prophet ﷺ not only the first thing that he would see before doing his ibadah was what he needed to prepare, but also a reminder of the love of his wife for him in a very, very simple and small act. What a beautiful act of love from the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. So it's no surprise, brothers and sisters, that Aisha radiallahu anha became one of the most knowledgeable people of this ummah. In fact, Imam al-Zahri, he said that, that Aisha radiallahu anha's knowledge surpasses the knowledge of all of the men of her time and all of the other mothers of the faithful combined. That if you combine all of the knowledge of everyone else together, then it's still less than her knowledge. As we know, the Prophet said at one time, he had a woolen blanket and his family came under it and the Prophet وسلم, put all of them underneath and he recited the verse from Surah Al-Ahzab إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا I'll mention one other story in which the Prophet وسلم, received Fatima and in order to get it you have to understand that every time that his daughter visited him Every single time the Prophet ﷺ would stand up. Now I'm going to talk to all. Are there any Desi people here? I don't see any Desi people. <laughs> There's some Desi people here? Okay. Okay. Have you ever seen a parent get up for their kids? That's like a. You're going to. That's, that will be, now you're in big trouble. <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ would stand up and receive his daughter whenever she used to visit him. He would take her hand. This is not when she was a little girl, this is when she was an adult. And he would kiss her forehead. The Prophet ﷺ would kiss her forehead and would make sure th and take her by the hand and have her sit down in the exact spot that he ﷺ had been sitting. And when he visited her, then she used to stand up and receive him. And she would. Why do you think she knows what to do? Because of the respect that the parents showed the kids, so now the kids know how to show the parents respect. Because they witnessed that. So because Fatima radiallahu anha had seen the great love and compassion and respect from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa all of her life, then when she used to receive him, she would do the same. During his illness, at the time of the death of the Prophet وسلم, he called her close to him. And he whispered something into her ear, something that nobody else could hear. And immediately, Fatima radiallahu anha started to cry and to weep. And he saw that and he whispered a second thing. And then Fatima started to smile and to laugh. And Aisha radiallahu anha immediately asked her, what was it that he said? And she said, first, the Prophet sallallahu informed me that his death from this illness was imminent. And so I started to cry at the thought of him leaving me. And then he informed me that out of all of his relatives, that I would be the very first one to join him. And this time, I was overjoyed because there was nothing that made her more happy than the thought of being united with the Prophet ﷺ. My dear brothers and sisters, are we like the Prophet ﷺ when we come to the masjid 
that the kids run to him. Said that the kids used to chase the Prophet ﷺ and they would tackle him. Some would, these are young kids, and they would fall on him and the Prophet ﷺ would give them hugs and he would kiss them. And whenever the Prophet ﷺ used to pass by, the kids used to say salam to him. He would put his hands on their, on their heads and he would pick up the small children in his arms. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As a result of all of this affection, every single one of the companions thought that I am the most beloved person to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now there's a narration by Imam al dhahabi that the Prophets all die, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, in the place that is the most beloved to them. And we saw that with the Messenger وسلم, that he departed this earth from the lap of his wife Aisha. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we talk a lot about the seer and what the Prophet وسلم, his example and how we need to be like him. But if we can live the home life of the Prophet وسلم, then we have lost the entire essence of who he was and what kind of person he was. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us by the mention of his Habib, his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli afdal as-salati ala as-adi makhlukati ka sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim adada ma'lumatika wa midada kalima tika kullama dhakaraka dhakiruna wa ghafala an dhikrika al-ghafinun Thank you, Imam Rafai, for the enlightening speech. Next, we will listen to the nasheed by ICCP youth Sara Shah, a Quran class student and former ICCP Sunday school student. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I will be. I will be singing um, a short nasheed for you all um, called Ya Habibi Qalbi. Ya Habibi Qalbi, Ya Khaira Baraya, Ya Li Jidda Bil Haqqi, Rasool Al Hidaya, Ya Rasool Allah, Ya Habib Allah, Ya Rasool Habib Allah, يوم الولادة كالبداية للحداية كالبداية يوم الولادة كالبداية للحداية كالهداية للحداية بالحداية in Tajid Ya Toha, Bin Nur Il Hidaya, Ya Rasul Allah, Ya Rasul Allah, Jitta Bidin Allah, Jitta Kulbaraya, Ya Habib Allah, Ya Habib Allah, Ya. Thank you, Sarah. 
By popular demand, we will now have Suhail Sheikh play the saxophone again <laughs> and uh, sing the Ta'ala al Badru. <laughs>
Thank you, Sunday School students and parents, for all your hard work. Now, our ICCP Sunday School kids wanted to share their presentations they have prepared for today, displaying their love and affection for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The role of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a religious leader is studied in an extensive way. But what about his leadership in other areas, such as planner and being a leader of the city of Al Medina, and later on what is called the Islamic State? First, I'm going to give some examples that show the Prophet, peace be upon him, skill as a planner, and in the second part, as a great leader, as a good planner. Throughout the Sira, we learned that the Prophet, peace be upon him, faced several difficulties and hardship in his hometown, Mecca. And when he decided to go to another city called Taif, second major city of, after Mecca, he and his companion Zayd ibn al-Haritha were injured in the end of their journey. He learned that he should not venture outside of Mecca without making sure he will be welcomed in the new place. The decision to move to Medina was not made in haste. It took two years of of careful planning. Indeed, he negotiated a plan with the two Arab tribes, Aus and Khazraj, which we call Pledge of Aqaba, to ensure that people became Muslim before his moving. In that way, he and his followers and Sahaba are going to be safe. However, why did the Prophet, peace be upon him, choose Medina and not, and not another city in Arabia? It is because the city was quite far from Mecca to freely sp spread the word of Islam. Medina was close to the trade route that connected Mecca and Syria, which makes the fortune of Quraysh people. To be in contact with Bedouins and controlling the caravan of the Quraysh. As a great leader, there's so much to recount about this point, but I'm going to limit my presentation to the concept of brotherhood and the pact of Medina. Migrating to Medina, Rasulullah, peace be upon him, introduced a concert called Brotherhood of Mawakhat in Arabic in order to nullify the tri tribalism and to set a harmony and to consider the different tribes as one community. So the tribal conflicts that prevailed before Islam was replaced by brotherhood. Muhajirun and Ansar were brothers and sisters. Another achievement of our Prophet, peace be upon him, was the constitution of Medina, the chart or pact of Medina. It is considered as a major and a pioneer act done by our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, in order to establish harmony and peace between the different tribes living in Medina. The genius of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, clearly emerges from the conception, the formulation, and declaration of the constitution of Medina. This chart provided the Muslim people more security and religious freedom. It establishes the right and duties for all components of Medina. There are a lot of examples in the Sira that shows the genius of the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a planner and as a leader, which lead to the success of the early Muslims. Also, we learned from Rasulullah's Sira that every setback in life was considered as a stepping stone for larger gains. Thank you. The Blessed Hand by Fawzan Rikia. The Prophet Muhammad was not, a sim was not simply a man. He split the moon with his blessed hand. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gives all great things to the Prophet and he distributes them across the earth's span. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. During the Battle of the Trent, Sayyidina Jabir slaughtered just one lamb, but the Prophet Muhammad multiplied the food in the pan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The smell of cool musk was fragrant whenever someone touched his blessed, soft hands. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the, battle, at the battle of Badr, he used his blessed hand to blind the enemy with just a handful of sand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Muslims swore allegiance to the Prophet, Allah's hand was over their hands. All the people across the land swear allegiance to him now because you can, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brief of the life of Rasulullah, peace be upon him. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, was not an ordinary man. He was sent as a mercy to all mankind and was the seal of the Prophets. Indeed, Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayat 107. We have sent you as mercy to all. The blessed Prophet, peace be upon him, was sent not to a certain tribe, but to the whole world. All Prophets before him were sent to warn and guide us a specific nation or people. He was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach the people about morality and piety and to worship Allah alone. Our prophet, our prophet, peace be upon him, practiced what the Quran taught. He was our true role model. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said that the prophet, peace be upon him, was a walking Quran. As a human being, he had passed through all the human experiences. In each case, he set the best example for us. Rasulullah, peace be upon him, always worked towards spreading Islam. He suffered much for his mission and never decided to give up. He spent his time teaching Tawheed and setting changes and reforms in the life of people. Furthermore, he, he, he spent of every night in prayer, thanks to our prayer, Prophet, peace be upon him, that today we can call ourselves Muslims. It's the result of his efforts and perseverance. On the Day of Judgment, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will ask that Allah's forgiveness be given to all of his ummah. He will be our Shafiq and intercessor. A man once came to Rasulullah, peace be upon him, and asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, when is the last day coming? Rasulullah, peace be upon him, answered, Well, what have you prepared for it? The man replied, Not much. I have not made a lot of prayers or fasted much or given a great deal to charity. But I love, but I love Allah SWT and his messengers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, respond, responded, Don't worry then. You will be with the ones you love. As believers, we should follow the sunnah of our Prophet and we should love the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, more than ourselves. One day, Umar ibn al-Khattab told the Prophet, peace be upon him, O oh, messengers of Allah, I love you more than anyone except my own self. Rasulullah, peace be upon him, answered, None of you will truly believe until I am dearer than your own self. Umar then said, by the one who sent down the book to you, I love you more than myself. The Prophet said, Ah, now you have belief, Omar. <laughs> Narrated by Al-Bukhari. Thank you. Thank you, ICCP Sunday School students. What a wonderful job and a wonderful way to celebrate Mawlad and Nebu. Next, we will listen to the ICCP Sunday School Girls Nasheed.
to the ICCP Ensemble kids who performed the Nasheed. Finally, alhamdulillah, we will now <laughs> listen to ICCP Imam Rafari's concluding du'a. Thanks for your patience. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you parents for all of your patience and listening very attentively. You were almost as good of an audience as the kids were. <laughs> MashaAllah. You guys did even better than the grown-ups. <laughs> yeah, we have some goodies for you. So before we do that, we're going to end with... We began with remembering Allah, we're going to conclude with remembering Allah. So please join me. Allahumma lak alhamd. Allahumma ameen. O oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. We thank you for your many gifts and bounties that you have bestowed on us. You've granted us. Min kulli ma We, as you, uh, you have said that you have given us everything that we have asked for. Allah, you have showered us with health, with wealth, with family, and with all of the goodness in this world. We ask you, Ya Allah, that you continue to extend the benefits in this world and that you also give us goodness in the akhirah, in the hereafter. We ask you that you rectify all of our affairs, that you keep our families on the straight path, that you bestow from our children and from our spouses, who will be the source of comfort, the coolness of our eyes, the joy of our lives. And we ask you that you will make them the leaders for the muttaqeen, for all of the righteous people. We ask you also that you have mercy on all of those who have passed away those from our loved ones who couldn't be here, those whom we miss, especially our parents and our grandparents. And we ask you that you show mercy on them. Rabbi rahamhuma kama rabbawna sigara. O Allah, forgive lana wa li ikhwanina wa li abaina wa li ummahatina wa li ikhwanina for all of our brothers and sisters, for all of our fathers, for all of our mothers who preceded us in Iman. All of those that shared the word of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah and joined us in their love for Al Habib al Mustafa, for the beloved one that was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grace this world with his presence and to send mercy through every pocket and every corner of the universe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you raise us in his company. Allahumma rizukna jiwara habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad. Give us the companionship and the being the neighbor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in al-Jannah. We ask you that you enter us into al-Firdaus along with our children and our family and our loved ones. We ask you that you give us a drink of water from the hawd, from the pool of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after which we will experience no thirst. We ask for the shafa'at, for the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this gathering, bless what we've learned, and bless us in our departing as well. Allahumma ja'al jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma, wa ja'al tafarruqana min ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma, wa la taj'al baynana wa la minna shaqiyan wa la mahruma. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma sifoon, wa salamun ala al-musaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.